Welcome back to the Greenfoot Explosion Tutorial, Part 3. We pick it up exactly where we left off before. Just to recap the state we had is we have a rock here that we can put um, into the world and we make it run so that things can move around. And now if we um, invoke the explode method here, it explodes. Um, and we want to do various different things. Um, first of all, remember how the explosion works when we explode the rock. Um, let's have a look at this. It places debris um, at its own location, that is its own X and Y location. Place debris is just it places a number and the number is here defined in a constant as 40. 40 bits of new debris object at its own location um, and then removes itself. The debris objects, um, they the movement is determined by two things. They get a random initial vector and then at every act step they uh, gravity gets added to them so that is they start off in a random direction but then gravity will pretty quickly pull them down. That's what we're seeing here. First thing I want to do is I want to cause the uh, explosion not by right clicking here and invoking the explode method. I want to be able to do that with a key. Um, so I do, I get a key press here. Let's say any key press will explode a rock. So I do something like green foot um, and then I forgot what the method is called to look for key presses. So I go here go into my help menu. There's the green foot class documentation which opens the web browser and shows me this. I know that in the green foot class here somewhere are the key methods. So here's a get key method. Get the most recently pressed key, so that time if I have multiple rocks, only one of the rocks will get the key press. So it's get key, uh, it returns a string, and if you look at this, uh, get the most recently pressed key. Uh, if no key was pressed, it will return null. That will be important for us. So I go in here and say get key and we have just seen that um, this will return a string. So here's my string and then I say, I don't care actually which key it is, um, any key that is anything that's not null um, will cause the explosion at the moment. So I just say if key is not null then explode. And there's a spelling error. Yeah, let's try to compile this. Okay, and now we can try that out. If I put a rock in there and nothing happens, and now which you can't see on the video, but I'm pressing a uh, key on my keyboard now and boom, it flies apart. Okay, that is should work nicely now with multiple rocks. If I put multiple rocks in now and I press a key on my keyboard um, several times, on every key press, one of these explodes. Okay, I've got two two problems with the explosion at the moment. First of all, they look too big. I want them, I want them to be a little bit uh, narrower. But uh, that is fairly easy now because here I have a constant um, in my debris that I created earlier that tells me sort of uh, the actual force. Let's make that a little bit. So let's see. That's just a little bit less. I don't know how much of a difference that makes. Let's try that out. So and press a key again. Yeah, okay. I don't want them to fly completely out of the screen. Let's try that a bit less again. Um, take a rock again. Oops. There. Run it. Press a key. Yeah, okay. So they don't fly so far out anymore. The other thing I don't like, if you see this, I put a few rocks again. Now I press a few keys on my keyboard again. If you look closely at the bits of debris, of course they, because they use the same image, they are all the same size and shape now. And that doesn't look so nice. What I want to get a slightly more realistic look, I want the, the bits of debris to look all different. So what I can do is I can, instead of making many different images, I can just distort this image a bit. So when I create a bit of debris, the two bits of variation that I can easily achieve on the image is I can scale it to a different size and I can rotate it. And let's say I just give it a random rotation and I get give it a random scaling. Um, so 
so let's say I work on the random image size first. I write a comment here so that it's clear what I'm doing. So the moment um, the bit of debris gets created, um, by default every object uh, gets initialized with this image here that is defined for the class. So by the time you get into the constructor of this debris object, it already has the class image. So I can now just use get image and this will give me access to the current image that it has and what that returns is something of type green foot image. So I can store this in a variable of type green foot image. Now this is my current image so I'm getting the image, the default image for the object and that is the class image out and then I have methods to scale this image. If you look that up again let's look at the green foot documentation again uh, this time at the Greenfoot image class, there's a somewhere in here is a scale method where I can just specify the width and the height of the image that I wanted to have. Uh, so I can um, give this image a new width and height. So let's say I um, take width and I make this a random number again. I have here already the call to the Greenfoot random num number generator and I make that say anything up to 30 pixels wide um, and I um, also uh, give it a height which is also random, another random number, not the same random number so it's not always square, it can be arbitrary rectangles up to 30 pixels wide, uh, <coughs> sorry, or anything less. Um, and now I've done this, I can say image.scale um, with my random width and random height. Um, note that I do not actually have to set the image again because um, by doing a greenfoot.get image, I am getting access to the image of the object. But this image, the same image object, remains the image of the object. So by changing that image, this is really a mutable image, that is, changing that image will change the image that the object is currently using. Uh, and then I also set the rotation um, of this. Uh, oops. I didn't mean to do that. I was doing a paste there thinking I had still this in my paste buffer and I didn't. So instead I paste the screen for get random number and there's a rotation I want something random out of 360 degrees. So now every time a bit of debris gets created it gets uh, the image gets um, a bit skewed uh, and the rotation gets changed. We can try this out. I can now just shift selecting debris and shift clicking in the world L see that all my bits of debris here that I put in now actually have different shape and size and if I make them run they all fly around somehow um, we can try that out now put a rock in and press a key on my keyboard again whoa and there we get an exception let's see what's wrong here it says a legal argument exception with is zero and height 13 must be non-zero. Oh, okay, so it tells me here a width for something was zero, but it's not allowed to be zero. How can I find out where that was? 